Hello and welcome to the Philly Peach Podcast where I am your host Jasmine Ross aka Empress Rossi and if you have chosen to tune in to the Philly Peach Podcast today that means you are choosing growth and development because that's what we talk about here how we can grow and develop in our mindset um, and become who we are meant to be right? And so we are currently discussing the topic or I've been going over the topic of marriage in the last few episodes. And today I'm going to just bring it all together and commence the conversation or the topic with practice and preparation, right? And how essential that is. So previously I'd actually been talking about submission and how it is important for us as women who are wives, we might be single wives right now, yet to be married wives. However, Um, And I say that in reference to or in respect of the Proverbs 31, no, Proverbs 18 scripture that talks about he who finds a wife finds a good thing. Is that Proverbs? I might be, I might be a little off today. Nevertheless, that's what I mean when I say a single wife, because he who finds a wife, right? That means she may be a single woman. She does not have a husband, but she is indeed a wife. I am indeed a wife. You may be watching this and you are indeed a wife and you just have yet to be found by your husband. Okay, that just might be what it is. So you may be a single wife and yet to be a married wife. But nevertheless, in this time, while we are waiting, while we are preparing to become the married wife, there are a lot of things that we can do to practice and develop habits now in our singleness that we can continue the habits in our marriage because I have heard it said so many times by so many different couples whether they were Christian or not about the fact that being married does not change your habits does not change your character it does not change who you are when you get married it just changes your status from single to married right? And now, of course, we've discussed the fact that marriage does come with a lot of other things, most especially the spiritual benefits and, you know, the unity and the fullness of the design and the desire of marriage established by God. However, in our natural, in our reality, we have habits and we have things that we do, right, that we don't necessarily notice or even care about or think about before we do them because we're just used to doing it. And I have learned as I've continued in this process and in my journey of preparation to be a wife or to be a married wife, um, that there are certain things that I needed to adjust and begin to practice and do more regularly so that way it is more of a habit in my marriage um, than something that I am attempting to implement in an effort to ignite or create something that I'm not used to doing, I guess, to make it more natural. And so... This was something that God had made clear to me as I was preparing for my new job. Um, As I had told you guys previously, I had um, been back home in Philly and the only thing that I was doing was driving Lyft. I wasn't really working. I didn't have a job. And so in preparation for my new job, God had made me realize and he brought to my attention that there are certain things that I need to do um, as far as my daily um, hygiene practices and like beauty uh, repetition practices and things like that. And so like, I wasn't a woman who wore makeup often. And even now you can see, um, I'm not one who wears a lot of makeup, the foundation and concealer and all that. I don't like doing all that. Um, And I still don't. (laughs) So I don't do the foundation and concealer and all that stuff. I do lips, liner, and lashes. That is my thing. That is my makeup. That is the start and finish. And (laughs) that's all that there is to it. Um, And so if it is for, um, a particular event like uh, previously for prom or different things like that I had done a fashion show but I don't think we, we didn't do like hair and makeup and all of that for that um, but if it was for some sort of special event then I might do boom the whole shebang did all the stuff all the things right but for the most part I do not on my regular daily now um, I, it's lips liner lashes she's done okay I'm ready to go I'm not the woman who's spending an hour and a half on her face of the three hours it takes to get ready. All right. I am working on being the woman who doesn't even take three hours to get ready because I like to be out the door and on time for things. And so I'm working on preparing for my my work week, you know, pulling out my outfits beforehand. These are things that I'm working on making a habit of now so that way I'll have a habit of it in my marriage. So when it comes to quote unquote, the hygiene and beautying myself or beautifying myself, it's like, okay, God was like, okay, you need to make a regular routine of the things that you do to care for your own body, right? So I needed to make it a regular thing of doing my nails. I would do my nails sometimes, not all the time, but now I make it a habit to do my nails every week, every two weeks. Um, 
I make it a habit to get my hair done. I get my hair done. Um, and actually, when I say get my hair done, I mean going to a salon at least once a month. And that's just so she can get washed, cleaned, and trimmed. Um, and then I also make it a habit to at least go and get a pedicure once a month. The things that I'm doing once a month are things that I can upkeep and maintain for the rest of the month on my own. Um, but I prefer, especially when it comes to my hair, because she's just too much and I just cannot handle her anymore on my own. Um, and so I'm either braiding her up if she's down and she's out. That means that, you know, I went to the salon to get it done and I can at least maintain doing the regular things day to day. Um, but for the most part, these were all things that I had to develop a practice of to make it a more consistent behavior. Right. Because I wanted to make sure that, um, one, I, I, I love myself. Right. And I want that to be evident in the way that I present myself, no matter what I'm doing, no matter where I'm going, no matter who I'm around or who I'm talking to. So to make that a habit. Um, so that was like the hygiene part of it and the beautifying. Um, but then the other thing is in the, the practice of submission, now making sure that one, especially when I talk to men, I do my best to be quiet and listen when they're talking. I have a very regular habit of interrupting somebody when I think I know what they're going to say or I know what I want to say in response to what they're saying. And it's also something that we do in my family. Like we'll be having conversations and we'll just interject in the minute of, in the moment of having the conversation. Like, oh yeah, da 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 da. And this is so and so and so and so. And then, oh yeah, da da da. Like, so we go on and on and on. And it's of no like disregard or disrespect. Like that is just how we have developed the habit of interacting um, with each other. And like, <laughs> it's, it's to the point where I'm now, because I've become conscious of it and have made an effort to change this behavior, um, I notice how we do it in my family and it kind of tickles me because I'm noticing where I got it from now. I'm seeing the patterns <laughs> in my family for myself. And so I am now making it a, a more of a habit so that way I am not doing that to my husband. I don't want to disrespect him and not listen to what he has to say. And that's really with anybody that I'm dealing with. And so I do my best to be quiet. And I mean, to the point where I'm, I'm making a practice of it and I practice that not just with men. I do it. I'm very uh, much more conscious of it when I'm speaking with men or talking to men or engaging with men. But um, just because that is the, the main reason for me making a practice of it. But I'm even doing that with my friends. And so I might be on the phone with them and you can act, you, you could literally ask them in the shows, but they, they tell me all the time, like, they'll be like, hello, like, are you there? And they're checking to make sure I'm still on the phone because I'm that quiet. Like I literally will be like silent and listen to you and allow you to express or say what it is that you want to say. Um, I do better to think about how I respond to things um, and do my best to not allow myself to respond out of my feelings, out of my emotion, um, but take the time to really think about, okay, are you, is this something that is, is really true based on the reality of the situation? Or is this something that you're just going to say because of how you feel right now? And will you regret it later? Um, now it seems like that's a lot, but when you're doing this with intentionality, when you're doing this on purpose, to enhance and improve yourself, it's it's not, it takes longer for me to say that out loud than it does for me to think that in my mind before I make, you know, my response to something being said to me or something that someone else may say. Um, and so the other thing that is important I've found is allowing other people to do stuff for you. Most especially when you even encounter men just in public. So if a man opens the door or holds the door for you, saying thank you, right? You, I wouldn't think that you would have to be told to say thank you, but apparently we live in a, a pretty rude society these days um, and people don't say thank you. And I've experienced that. Like I've held the door for people and they say thank you. And I'm just like, oh, okay, well, I'm not holding it for you no more. Okay, but I'm learning that I'm not, I can't always do that. I can't always respond like that. And it's, it's not personal, right? That's my response because I was taking it personal. But that's something else, being conscious of the response based on where it's really coming from. Is that a response because that was really the intent of the person uh, toward me? Or is that only my response because of where I'm at? And because of how I feel and because of whatever trigger of insecurity or emotional thing that that has now uh, caused me or, or impacted me in. And so that's why I'm responding. I'm responding from that hurt place that they just hit. It's not because that's what they really intended to do to me. It's not because that's what they really intended to say to me. I, I, I'm only offended because I'm hurt somewhere, right? Okay. So there's that too. 
Um, and so these are just things to be aware of to practice. Another thing that I realized actually one day I was in a dollar store and coming out, I was in line, I was paying for my things, coming out, getting ready to go out the store. And there was a gentleman in the line behind me and he was finishing up as I was grabbing my bags from the, the end of the counter on the register. He was like, oh, hey, do you need me to grab the door for you? And I was like, no. And so, and I didn't, I didn't give him the face I just made. <laughs> <laughs> but I like, I picked up my bags, I paused on, I looked and I was like, oh no, I'm fine or whatever like that. And just walked out the door with my bags because I have a habit of being on my own from being on my own rather, um, of just doing things myself. So I am like every, I'm the one trip person. Okay. Everything's coming. Okay. Whatever I got to do, I will have bags up to my shoulder but it's all coming with me right now. <laughs> I'm not coming back. Every man got to come now. Cause you, if you don't come, you left all every man for himself after that. Okay. So I take all the bags. <laughs> okay. And I live on the second, second floor. So I'm grabbing all the bags to carry up the steps because guess what? I'm not doing these steps twice. I'm home now. If I'm not going back out, I'm not coming back now. Okay, so we just gonna do all this in one trip. And so I'm the one trip girl. And so because of things like that, um, <clears throat> I have certain habits that I've developed in my independence and in doing things, going places solo, going and doing things on my own. And so I noticed that there are certain things, especially when it comes to me traveling, um, places that I have been and simple things like allowing a man to open the door for me, recognizing that, hey, that could be, uh, a moment for a man to try to get you one-on-one. -on -one. He wants to, you know, proposition or pursue you in that moment and trying to make an introduction. So his way of trying to do that without being like all obvious or, you know, a little too over the top is to say, hey, can I hold the door for you? Because now he gets to walk with you to the door, hold the door, stop in that moment and possibly even walk you to the rest of the way to your car. Now, now I'm, I'm not saying that that was the case with the man at the register where I was at, but that's the thought that came to my mind and me being at this point and in this preparation process. And I thought of that. It could potentially be a moment like that, right? I haven't met <clears throat> my future husband yet. So that could be how he decides to do the encounter. And if I shut him down, now I just shut down the opportunity, right? Not to mention no one likes rejection, but men especially, they get rejected more often, right? So that, that adds another layer to it in a way. And so just thinking of something like that, um, made me realize even in those moments that is still a form of practicing submission by allowing something to be done for you um, by allowing right that's the yielding remember I defined uh, what submission meant and that is to yield to another's advice another's assistance another person's perspective or opinion and so when you are taking the time to yield to to put first somebody else right to put before I believe was the specific definition um and so in that recognizing one in your your marriage putting your spouse before other people right I talked about that because I was like yo them little um them little angels okay my little munchkins that have yet to arrive um that it's going to be beautiful I can't wait to be a mother I can't wait to nurture my children and love on them but guess what else I can't wait for okay I can't wait to nurture my husband I can't wait to love on him okay let me tell you all right so it's those types of things that um in, in acknowledging that that I realize is important for submission submission um and it is important in the preparation process to practice the habits of doing certain things now so that way you will have that habit in your marriage and then that is also another means of um identifying the person that is the compliment for you right aside from or along with i won't say aside from because there's nothing aside from the from the guidance in the word of god everything is is in compliment to or along with the word of god and so in along with what we have been talking about and what i have understood and learned through the word of god of his desire and design for marriage and the relationship between a husband and wife um it is important to be able to identify the person that complements the qualities and characteristics even the habits that you already have i don't have a habit of cursing anymore 
Um, and so I, I don't want to be in a relationship with a man that curses uh, even often, let alone a little bit. And so that's just one of the things that comes to my mind. I might understand randomly out of a moment of frustration, right? Um, but not where every other word that comes out of his mouth, he got, you know, he's cussing somebody out. I just, I'm not, I don't like it. I'm not comfortable with it. And honestly, I feel disrespected when I hear a man curse in front of me. Okay. So, um, but this is just now a, a conditioning that I have in my mind of what I desire. And so I said that to say that there is certain things that I make a habit of, and I've made a practice of, I've, I've been, making it uh, a, a more conscious effort to make sure I don't curse. I don't find that attractive for myself as a woman. Um, I don't like smoking um, in a man, so I don't find that attractive for myself as a woman. I've always been put off by smoking. I've never liked it. Um, I've tried it and I, I just, I couldn't get into it. Um, and then drinking, I do enjoy um, a cocktail here and there. Um, but I'm not like the wine girl who's got to have a glass of wine when I get home and all those kinds of things. Like, that's just not me. And honestly, I was put off from wine just because I was drinking the cheap stuff and it started giving me headaches. And I learned that it was probably because of the sugars in it. And I might like the real stuff and all of that. But the real stuff is a little bit out of my budget right now. So I don't do that neither. Um, but yeah, I like to enjoy me a little cocktail. But then once I got my own car and I started driving, I was like, what we're not going to do is jeopardize this license or this vehicle because I waited so long for this. So I will not be drinking and driving. So anytime I might go out and I am driving there I will not drink um and so all, all these types of things but these are things that I've been conscious of things that I've been made aware of um either in my time of uh closeness or alone time with God or through just my different interactions things that I recognize as pattern behaviors that I had picked up and things that I had done um before that I know I don't want to carry on now, something else that I have made a, a point of and something else that I have always, absolutely always loved, all right, and have always done, but I didn't always <laughs> make it um, a point to wear is my high heels, okay? And I heard, because I don't know from the perspective of a man, but I heard they love them, right? And so I'm like, I pray that my husband... <laughs> is going to know, right, the love I have for shoes, okay? I love my high heel shoes. Um, they are my absolute favorite accessory to any outfit. And so I have now made it a more conscious effort to um, buy heels that I can wear casually or professionally. And that way I can have that dynamic of when I want to put them on with a certain outfit, then I can. Um, I do like to chill out and dress down sometimes, but most of the time I do like to be dressed, right? So um, that's something that I've been more conscious of. And these are just, again, things that God brought to my attention to be aware of in preparation for being married to make sure that I'm conscious of, okay, the things that I choose to wear, the things that I, you, you know, the way I choose to present myself, the way that I take care of myself. Why? Because my hygiene and all these things will be a habit. Now, along with the shoes, right, you got to have the right clothes. You got to have the outfits. And so I've listened to um, different podcasts, watch different YouTube and Instagram lives and all these different things. Listen to men talk about how much it changes with the way the woman presents herself at home after now being married. And I'm like, I don't even want to be that. Like, I don't. And so now I'm like, okay, I'm thinking of different ways that I could really invest in my marriage and what are those ways that I can actually implement the habits of now and that comes to that is what brings me to outfits and what to wear especially around the house so I've invested in like silky robes and different little um pajama things and sets or pajama gowns um <clears throat> or just wearing like my little tank tops my little booty shorts or whatever like I have always like to be comfortable at home <clears throat> real comfortable at home you get my drift. Um, and so I like to be relaxed. <laughs> what, don't get me wrong. I love a good dressed up outfit. Look good when I go out. And when I come home, shorty be ready to relax. Okay. And when I say ready to relax, I mean everything comes off. Okay. To put it lightly. <laughs> okay. So put it lightly, we just, everything comes off. And so, um, but with that now, being more conscious of like, not just quickly wrapping my hair up, but I'm like, okay, when I get married, you know, making sure that I have um, 
silky, uh, I was gonna say silky sheets. We can have those too. Um, but pillowcases for my hair to protect my hair. And it's, it's many a times, especially when it's out, um, where I'm just like, uh, I don't even feel like wrapping this up today. I don't even, so I end up sometimes, I'll even take my scarf off if I'm on a pillow or I'm laying somewhere and it's not like a silky, what's the name? A silky pillowcase. I'll just put my scarf around it so, so, I, can, so I can just lay down. Cause sometimes I wanna just lay down, right? Uh, I don't feel like doing all the work. Uh, like I said, I, I literally go to the salon now because they do the work that I don't wanna do. I don't wanna wash and blow dry and do all that. It's too much. So I go and, and take care of that. And so in the same vein, um, especially once my hair is done, I wanna be able to just be relaxed, right? That's one less thing I gotta do at night. And so one way that I can think of that'll, you know, eliminate that being an issue in my marriage, right? I want my husband to be ready to be on me at all times. I say that now as a single wife, all right? I'm not a married wife. So all y'all married wives are gonna be like, girl, you gonna wish you ain't say that. Girl, you gonna wish. Listen, let y'all marriage be y'all marriage, okay? I'm I'm preparing, right? I'm learning things that maybe you didn't know beforehand. So you, you didn't give it thought, all right? So don't come for me. I'm just saying as a single marriage, I mean, as a single, <laughs> as a single wife right now, in my mind, the things that I'm prepared for, this is what I want to do to intentionally be prepared to intentionally invest in the marriage that I desire to establish with the man that I trust God has in store for me with the man that I trust. God has also gotten this process of preparing for me as well. And so with that being said, <clears throat> um, I, I just wanted to make sure that I shared this because I found this to be an essential aspect of this process of preparation, is the practice in preparation. So taking the information and not just taking the information and writing it down, but now that you've learned it, you take the information, you write it down, and now it's time to implement, right? It's time to put it in practice. And it even tells us in the Bible and the word of God to make sure that we are not just hearers of the word, but we are doers as well. And so realizing that I'm not just taking in what it is that God has given me and I'm not just taking in what he has told me but I'm making note of it and I'm looking at okay how do I understand this in a way that now I know exactly how to implement this in my lifestyle on a daily regular basis so that way I can make a habit of it you know and so that is what my encouragement is for you so these are just some things that I wanted to share with women that I've understood to take advantage of to make an effort in and now even for you to take an effort in and manage and and now implement so that way you are prepared and you have already developed the habits so that way when you get married it is not too much of an adjustment um for you and I even think now like cooking um, I do enjoy cooking. I like cooking a lot because it's one of the ways that I get to express my creativity. And um, when it comes to that, you know, creativity is one of the ways that I identify and I connect with God. And so I find that to be one of the qualities that I share with him. And so I take pride in my creativity. And so I love cooking. I do enjoy cooking, but I don't cook every night. So I'd be like, all right, some nights I'd be like, even though I don't feel like I'm going to do it right now, because I know there's going to be days when I get home from work, my husband's going to want to eat <laughs> and maybe we won't go out that night <laughs> and we can't go out all the time. Like we can go out sometimes, but I don't even want to do that. You know what I'm saying? And the way the food is in the world today, I don't, I don't even be wanting to eat it now. <laughs> so I'm going to need to cook. And that's what has led me to cooking a lot more lately is the fact that I'm now beginning to get turned off by a lot of other food, like at restaurants or fast food and things like that. And so nevertheless, that's just another thing that popped into my mind. But I just wanted to bring it all together to encourage you all to practice in your preparation while you are waiting in your time of preparing to become the married wife from being a single wife. I want you to be encouraged to practice what you desire to do, practice the habits you want to establish. So that way when the time comes, when your union is established, once you've consummated, this goes along with those qualities that you bring to your marriage, those habits you have, you are also bringing to your marriage. Work on those habits now, develop those habits now, so that way they'll be maintainable habits in your marriage, in your future with your spouse. All right, and so with that, we are gonna come to a close on this episode of the Philly Peach Podcast, but I promise I'll be back with another episode. And until then, as I said before, and I'll say again and every time, pray, prepare, pursue, persist, and you will prosper. 
Pray about everything. Don't worry about anything. Prepare for what you prayed for. Be uh, persistent. Pursue what you prayed for. (laughs) And be persistent in your pursuit and you will prosper. Till next episode, I'm Jasmine Ross. And this has been another Philly Peach Podcast episode. See you next time.